Okay, I want to show you, these are the vacuums I'm using. Um, it's an old pet, pet vacuum, or pet, pet dryer. It's a model B24. Now it has, has a heater in it, two settings there, and this is a speed control for the, for the motor itself. Um, this here, is the exhaust so since it's a pet dryer it just blows air out um, and the heater is here now I need to free up this obstruction because this is this is slowing down the air volume by at least 50% uh, if not more so the air inlet is here but this this model here has a cap that comes off with all the different filters Okay. And then, and then this is the air inlet. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a graded thing there. But we're going to be leaving that in there. And then this, this Porsche, I just took this out of there. This here, we're going to break this out. We're actually going to be able to attach our, our PVC fitting right here. And this has to stay in because it's actually a, a spacer. So I'm going to leave that in. That will help control some of the dust flow, you know, getting sucked back into the machine. Um, so we'll go from there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is disassemble this. this apart. Like I said, I think, well, I not have said it here, but um, I've said to other people that the Hurricane vacuum system, I had one on an old machine, and they're all this style motor. Now there are 220 motors, and this is only 110 or 220. Um, but it was four of those and I was like thinking to myself why can't I make this because I've had to replace a couple of those in the past you know motors would burn out or whatever they're not made for industrial use but the old company it was it was used hard every day all right now this is the heating element here so we need to remove this because we don't need that air restriction. We don't need to speed up this way. We just want the suction going this way. Um, so I'm going to take this out and remove all this stuff here. I think I did it before. Took this out. So you have a brown one here. You know what? I'm just going to leave these in place. I'm going to cut these off. Brown and red leads. I'll just come through that. Just disconnecting basically the, the heating element. Disconnecting where I don't need it. We don't need it here. So that comes off there. So put that back in there, that back in there. And that's it. That's your motor. These are the brushes here and here. The hardest thing is, is to house these motors because in, in, in the old one, in the old uh, hurricane vacuum, you know, they, they had, I think it was on this side, it had like a cone here that came out and kind of directed the air in, a port, and then that was like locked into the box. And this was kind of 
a pressure ring or something. I forget exactly, but that's that's what the, that was. And then this can just come out. All right. So then reassemble this. See, you have a straight shot through, so that should allow maximum airflow to, to go through. Spacer again, and then this the last bit. I just used a pair of wire cutters, side cutters. Let's break that out. see this is an uh, inch and a half PVC it fits almost perfectly in there it's a little bit wobbly but it's a pretty nice fit so what I did was was hot glue my fitting and just put it all in there like a hot glue around the edge here and then put some around here, jammed it in, then hot glue all all in there. Of course, I did this after it was screwed on, but now you have a major inlet here and your exhaust port there, so it kind of reverses the whole the whole thing. Now it would have been nice if I could just reverse the motor inside the the unit, but it, it just doesn't work that way so I didn't film this part of the build but I wanted to just show you the uh, manifold that I created to connect all of these uh, vacuum motors together as well as the valves it's a three inch PVC they're all three inch T's that are three inch to inch and a half and a couple of end caps on the end to to seal the, the the manifold off I just go straight down and basically into the motors uh, via uh, short pieces of pipe that are tied together with a rubber coupler and then a street 90 in there that I said before hot glued in there and then those are the only portions that are really glued um, the the valves on top are all pressure fit and yeah, this is this is what I came up with here are all the shower drains I'm using they take a two inch PVC pipe but uh, I'm running inch and a half for this whole system so this is a reducer from two inch to inch and a half that I'm putting in I'm gluing this portion uh, because these things tend to work out because they're just work their way out because they're so small the surface area there the fitting will tend to stay a little bit better um, I'm gonna be I glued the bottom half uh, the portion where the, it goes into the motors and all that the vacuum pump motors um, but the upper half it'll just be a friction fit now with all these ready to go I'm just using a regular window caulk uh, it's a fast drying caulk adhesive kind of thing um, but I'm just putting a bead on the upper edge which will allow me to stick it to the bottom of the the table and allow me to line up the holes without having to fight it and work for it but the caulk also creates that that seal around that we need for the vacuum I've seen others where they do it this way um, where they have a table like this 
but yet the one protruding hole isn't very well isn't very well sealed so I'm just trying to make a few improvements on what what I've seen other people do that's all I'm not saying this is the best way to do it but this is just uh, the way I chose Put all the screws in hand tight and then cinch them down with the gun. Try not to over torque them because there will be a little bit of a gap in between the there will be a little bit of a gap in between the vacuum table top and the piece. It's just the way that they're constructed. So I just want them tight and not not sucked down because then that would warp the tabletop. And I just continue the same process for the for the rest of them. Here you can see I'm connecting up the PVC pipe underneath to the manifold that I have um, with all the shutoff valves. So zone one is already connected. I just used a street 90 and a, then an elbow and a straight piece of pipe basically to, to fit that together. And I'm doing the same thing for each each valve um, or each zone. It's a street 90 that goes straight into the valve, and then you'll have a, a short section of pipe coming down from the shower drain, and then it just gets a 90, and then piped over to that street so it's a pretty straight shot I know they're tight angles and all that and I know it's not good for airflow but it's what I had to work with it's not ideal but it should work get these pieces moved in there and as tight as I can you see it's all pressure fit I can glue them it all depends how how everything works here I would prefer just to be a pressure fit so I don't have to cut things apart if I need to I already glued the manifold together there wasn't really any way of getting around that just having that be in pressure fit but I figured I figure this run up top wouldn't be that bad So I did this with, with each zone um, 
just connecting them up is pretty much a straightforward shot on almost all of them. The only one that's difficult was zone 4. It's just because I needed to come at a slightly different angle because 4 and 5, almost the, the pipes would hit each other. So what I did is I chose to cut a little small piece and then run a, a 45 degree angle fitting to kind of go around the pipe and then connect up that way. But it's all basically the same. A street 90 coming out of the valve, and then a piece of pipe, and then a 90, and then another piece of pipe that goes up into the shower drain. So then this is it. It's pretty, pretty simple plumbing. Trying to make it less complicated. I tried to make it simple. But it'll allow me to shut shut zones off or turn zones on. Allow me to come up with different jigs and fixturing kind of things. You know. But we'll see what happens. So this is complete. So now we're ready to work on the spoil board. Put that on, get that ready to go. Thanks for watching. 